five. Um, always action here on a Tuesday. So uh, we'll start with some things. Uh, Gary Kasparov has returned to play chess uh, in St. Louis, thanks to the sponsorship of Rex Singfeld. But that's not regular chess. It's the Chess 960, the Fisher Random Chess. Um, just at the uh, just after last week's marathon ended, you saw Ding Lorin beat Magnus Carlsen in a blitz playoff for first place at the Singfeld Cup. It's the first time in 10 years that Magnus has lost uh, any kind of playoff. Um, we had a lot of action from our games last week. I've got so many diagrams, so many interesting positions, so we're going to spend a lot of time this week on a rundown of, of what happened mm -hmm. and a preview of some of our big games tonight. But um, I thought I'd start you off with a puzzle. This is a black to move and win, an end game. And what spurred this is uh, our own one and only Tony Lama has returned from his month vacation. I think uh, you know Tony had uh, worked here for 28 years, um, and he's always been in the chess club, and you know him for his checkmates in three. But um, this one is actually uh, courtesy of his friend Guido, who's um, now studying the pawn endings. And block to move and win. Uh, a suggestion, anyone, for black? It would make a lot of sense to protect your advance past pawn. And then it's five pawns each. White, white can do something, though. White could try to clog up your kingside pawns here. And you have a choice. You could push the pawn, and none of these pawns can really break. And fine, you can move your king away, because if he takes your pawn, this one just runs. Um, the other thing is when you push this pawn up, if they take it, well, the one pawn stops those two effectively. And so you get a nice draw. Um, another suggestion for black? Not you, Guido. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. That one's loose. This will get you in the right spirit to play. One suggestion, a guess or something. Yes, we've tried A4, and the pawn came to G4. Right, it's, yes. It wouldn't be fun if that were the solution. Actually, you could, you could try that, and, but we are able to lock things up again. G4. Yeah, I think G4 is the G4 followed by. Okay, G4, I have to take your pawn. And what was the? Uh, H4. H4, you're giving up lots of pawns. I'm yeah, but one of them is breaking through, so it doesn't matter. No, G3, and now he's a pawn. Pawn to G3, and oh well, whether I push or not, takes. Then one of the pawn runs, E3. E3, but I can stop that pawn. And then this one runs. And I've got lots more pawns, but I, my king can't stop those. OK, very nice. Very nice. And Tony is back. You will have your mate in threes and uh, puzzles. So I'm uh, glad for his return. <laughs> but. Um, 
Um, we will have to ask Guido. I think this was a study. It certainly, it could be, yes. I mean, it's a very natural position. It reminds me of the puzzle where you have two sets of three pawns facing one another. The mm. link gets, oh, yeah. F, F2 to H2, white pawns. You mean such as these? Um, right. Yeah. The, yeah. How do you break two? It's very similar. Right? Yes. How do, you, uh, how do you get one of those pawns through when the kings are, are so far away? But um, I believe everybody here knows this, how white gets, gets a pawn through. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one pawn up, takes, and then one on the side. Yeah. Takes, and then to make a passer. So, so but you have to be closer. Right. So whenever the black can move, that strategy is there. Black could get a pass pawn, but it wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't go very far. <laughs> Very true. There's no way to force yourself to have pawn value or pawn getting on the No. No. So we, we'll move on to see how dear old Gary Kasparov is doing. And um, he went there facing all the uh, current sharks of the chess world. They have the top 10 players in. Uh, is this the Fisher Random? In the Fisher Random. One reason he probably chose the Fisher Random is. He's been retired for a while. His openings are just, you know, not up to the current level. Those, uh, you know, the current professionals, they spend a tremendous amount of time on the opening. And Gary doesn't want to play into an opening that they've been working with their supercomputer, and he has to play that. So he, um, he plays the Fisher random. Does the USCF have Fisher random ratings? Um, you, FIDE does. FIDE does. Yeah, I, I um, don't know if the USCF does. Um, they have to change the name for this event, too. It's called Fisher whatever 60 is in Roman. Chess 960. Yeah, but no, they, they, call it, uh, they call it Fisher 960? 9XL. Sounds like a car model. <laughs> <laughs> Starting, possible starting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, on. So, rather than um. I'll show you a very short one from the beginning, but the thing about this chess 960 is you start with some strange starting position, but after about 10 moves, it, it starts to look normal. Um, yeah, but, well, you can tell me if this one looks um, normal or not. Um, Kasparov, he got one of the tough ones. He, he got paired against Fabiano Caruana. But, uh, okay, he had, a couple of years ago, he had done well against Caruana and so in the rapid chess. Um, since then, uh, Caruana's got a bit better in his, uh, his rapid chess. And these games, they have 30 minutes each. So they're um, three pawn on B2. And Kasparov, what did I do with all those black pieces? Um, yeah. Here. He's got pawns on g6, h7, e5, e5, um, d4, b7, a5. Kings on B8. Bishop on B4. King on B5. Rooks on F7, F8. So he's 
So what, we have about material equality, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, but um, Kasparov took this knight with the rook. Rook takes, our bishop takes, rook takes allowing Caruana to do check and take the uh, knight on e th e6. So this would have been classic Kasparov in the old days. You've given up just a little bit of material, two, four, six, you know, a, um, your, the exchange down a pawn ahead, but um, You've, you've got very active pieces, the d3 pawn hanging. And here Kaspar brings a bishop here, a threatening checkmate. That looks kind of tough, but Caruana comes back with the queen. And um, Kaspar takes this pawn on d3, so he's got a, a pass pawn and now material equality. And um, now Caruana comes back with the rook, ready to defend. And here, Kasparov hits him with a, a shot. Bishop takes b2, decimating the, the king's protection. But it's a mistake. If he had just moved his rook to d2, he would have had good winning chances. But uh, now we'll ask you how you beat Gary Kasparov. Yes, everything's hanging down here. But you simply at attack the queen before the bishop has a chance to move with discovered check. Kasparov moved the queen. Take the pawn, check. You could. Taking with the queen wouldn't work because we would have traded the queens and king b6, attacking the rook. But the king comes to b6 anyway. Uh, if he had, but he didn't have time for that, or he, maybe he should have done that instead of bishop yeah. takes pawn. But we got to this position, and it still looks uh, still looks tough. What do we? I mean, we're threatening the rook. We're threatening discovered check. Do you want to take that bishop? But This, this rook to c5, oh, we're going to have a really nasty discovered check or maybe rook checks. Yeah. So maybe we can forgive Gary for, um, for thinking he was doing well in this position. White's move. And thank you, you found Fabiano's move, rook a4, and suddenly nothing works for black. It's just one little move. Where'd you go? You, if the queen comes back one square, yeah, the rooks have cut off the king, so queen checks is going to be the end. So, well, move the bishop, we take the queen. So Gary had to come queen b3, but then Fabiano just simplified the position, took the bishop, take the, square away from the rook. Yeah. take the square away from the rook. Very good. And 
Kasparov couldn't find anything at all, and he just resigned. And I'll show you one more short game, this one from the beginning. Um, I still find this uh, chess 960 a bit odd, but um, it's, it's gotten quite popular among a lot of the world's best players. So here's a starting position, knight in the corner. A rook, a king, rook, queen, bishop, bishop, knight. And for those of you who have never played this, that means black gets the same setup. Yes, I think a computer program randomly picks that up. You actually, you get the normal, so for instance, if these, if the knight were out of the way, we could, we could castle. Yeah, or we could actually, if these were out of the way, we castle with the, and the normal castling. No, they, they go to they go to the normal castle position. Now, this is again uh, Caruana and Kasparov. Yeah. And if you really love opening theory, someone like Elliot, you could uh, analyze all 960 starting positions to make opening theory. <laughs> no, no one's ever attempted that yet. I mean, you could write uh, 960 MCOs. Why, why are we that, that, that's right, yeah. I don't know if there'd be much of a market for it, but one could try. Okay, but we'll, we'll see how this game went because it's, it's a rather short game, so we won't uh, dwell too much on it. Um, okay, knight to b3. That looks like a sensible move. d5, f4. All right, makes sense to get your knights out of the corner since there's... White is Fabiano Caruana. Black is Gary Kasparov, and he couldn't play his Sicilian defense here. <laughs> well, um, so e4, queen could take it. I like this next move of Kasparov's, queen to a4, threatening a pawn. It, it all seems a bit odd. <laughs> you could in that. But Caruana is going to play aggressively. He's just going to develop his pieces like Morphe, you know, doesn't care about pawns. Pawn to e6, so the bishop, one bishop gets developed. Pawn to d4. Knight to c4. OK. 
Okay. Now, Caruana's uh, position is beginning to look a little sensible. The bishop's out, knight sort of out, pawns in the center. Um, Kasparov develops the bishop. I would have thought to play pawn to c3, but Caruana's queen. Well, I, I might take the knight. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. What's this now? The queen taking the bishop? You can. I'll be able to take the bishop on a3. It's, um, but Mike had uh, suggested um, bishop here, hoping that the pawn would. Yeah, that, that, that could be good. Um, I think we could get into the tactics here. I didn't want to dwell on this, uh, this chess 960. This is just to give you a, a flavor of... Um, and I wouldn't show it if it weren't a, a rather short game. Threatening the knight. So this makes sense. Pawn to b5 also... Open, yes, getting the rook in the game. Um, pawn takes d5, pawn takes d5. Um, knight c5 is a good move. Um, takes, takes. Mike, why not? If you would have castled queenside there, it would have knight for the loss of rook to black. Black could have castled queenside to try to get the d5. Um, yeah. Is, is black castle right now? You mean like castle like this? No, no, okay. Yeah. Well, we uh, we can't castle because of their pieces there. Oh no, that's yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah, we we shouldn't spend too much time on this. I'm going to ruin all your games for <laughs> <laughs> kind of analyzing this position. So, this is just really for for amusement. Will. Yeah, yeah. I, I probably shouldn't have, have done this, but um, <laughs> just because of the players, I wanted to uh, You're so take a look at it. Pawn to f6. Caruana puts the bishop on a nice diagonal. Um, oh, I'm sorry. It was um, Black's move after takes, takes. Kasparov takes a pawn. There's a pawn ahead, but the... Um, oh, and then pawn to f6. Knight to f5. The white pieces are on good squares, so uh, he's, he's played the way you classically should, and except for one rook, white's got a very normal position. And black's, because of this knight in the corner, which he never developed, black's in trouble here. Um, Gaspar finally develops, but loses one pawn back, and the F pawn is uh, weak. King attacking that. Which and takes with the bishop. And just uh, somehow Black's ended up in some trouble, but he plays very actively here willing to give up an exchange to get some attack on the king, but um, Caruana first takes the troublesome knight. And then takes the rook, so he's going to be up an exchange. And actually, he's not getting checkmated here with a rook to defend. As far up takes, knight f6, and black is attacking. But he's, he's not really got the wood for attacking because there's enough defenders if Caruana is precise, which um, now Kasparov threatens checkmate. Threatens knight check. And once again, it looked like it was going to be pretty good for him. 
But this is, but you know, it's a nice defense by by uh, Caruana here. Just plays pawn to b3, kind of making use of his his material to defend. And the queen can come over. So Gasparov came down again, but. Um, Queen c3, which is a nice defender there. Kasparov checks. King has to run away, ah, because there would have been a, a knight check. And Kasparov hits him with pawn to d4. So once again, like a very aggressive looking position for uh, Kasparov, sort of like the other game, the finish. But uh, Caruana just ended the game. He just moved the queen check, and then suddenly nothing works for, um, for block. If you interpose anything, he can, he can take it with the knight on f6. Uh, and if uh, you block or the king moves away, pawn takes c4, threatens to trade queens, and pins the knight. So Kasparov lost this game, and um, he didn't win that other game. He lost it, and suddenly, he, on the first day, he went to one half out of four against uh, Caruana, and then lost uh, the morning of the next round. And so then some of the people saying it's just no country for old men. <laughs> a little bit of a harsh comment for them. But. Somebody, yeah, some on on these four matches, there's. So these four one, ma matches were uh, rapid. Yes, rapid, 30 minutes each. Um, in this position, D three. Okay, that's a that's a good try. Um, C three, you you would at least have a check here. Maybe it's not enough. Can we just run away? Yeah, the knight's gone. You can check again with the pawn, but we're not going to touch that. We'll just run away and be a whole rook up. <clears throat> No, Caruana's playing very well in this rapid. He's, he's improved a lot in the last couple of years. But, well, I'd like to see Gary win a couple of games. It's so, um, yeah, Ding Lorin has been having a great uh, month or so. He, he beat Magnus Carlsen in the rapid. Then yesterday he played uh, our own Sam Shanklin in the chess.com blitz playoffs. And um, he beat Sam 19 to 12, which maybe, maybe that's about normal for their rating, but I was, I was hoping Sam would do a bit better. Ding is really tough these days, though. We, we could well see him as the challenger for the next world championship match. Ding Lirin. No, when, when is that? Oh, um, now that should be in November, if, I, if I've got it right, because it was. Um, is it the format where they have a big can candidates tournament and then mm -hmm. a challenger emerges? Yeah. Uh, yes, eight player candidates tournament and then that is challenger. Every two years? Yes, the, the world championship is now every two years. And is that candidates double round robin or just single round robin? No, I believe it's double. But with FIDE, they often change things. So. Is, is that a big, uh, <coughs> or is that a 
in the candidates. Well, it's two by rating. Um, it's uh, Fabiano because he was the challenger. Um, one spot is kind of a wild card for the organizer, but has to be like uh, one of the top rated. There are two from the this um, Grand uh, the Grand Chess Tour, and then there will be two from the 108. 28 player, um, what do they call it, World Cup tournament. So, so have a match qualified? No, he hasn't. Um, yes, I don't remember exactly. I know Ding will be in by rating and uh, Fabiano. Fabiano, probably, Lachère Le Grave is doing very well in the, um, the uh, chess tour. So one other person will get in from the chess tour, and then that 128 player World Cup hasn't been played yet. That's not going quite the scrum. Yes, yes. But uh, it usually gives a pretty good feel for the candidates. You get all you know, top contenders, and it, and it gives someone a chance. In the old days, back in the Bobby Fischer days, it was so long between World Championship matches and uh, <coughs> sometimes even hard to get in the qualifier. As we said last week uh, about Benko, he gave up his spot to give to Fisher. Otherwise, Fisher never would have been in that system in the 1971. Um, so I think I will switch to uh, some of our exciting positions from the... Um, the Tuesday night marathon. Uh, well, Mike said he didn't mind if I uh, showed his, uh, the finish of his game. That was. <laughs> well, it was, it was very ex And this is against um, uh, Sterling Albury, who's um, really gotten into form now, and, and who is going to play against the great one tonight for first place in the, uh, in the under 1600 section. F2. Rook, bishop, bishop, knight, g5. Have we got it right? Um, two, four, five, six, seven. Um, yes, and and uh, like as you said, you had gotten a little bit greedy taking these these pawns. You wanted to grab them, and felt a little under pressure here, and decided to lash out with knight to f five. Which, um, okay, if the pawn takes the knight's pinned. Um, yes, but Mike's willing to sacrifice his queen. I mean, if rook takes, queen takes, bishop, well, actually, if bishop takes, I'll take your queen check. Um, So I like this move. At least it's a, it's a real action move here. Um, s sadly, it's not quite enough. So Jerry, 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 since you're going to be playing <laughs> the opponent, what, what, what should uh, Black do in this position? Uh, no. uh, I don't know. Did he get his knight? Yes, yeah, so he did. Rook takes the knight. The take, take away the troublemaker and... The troublemaker, he also exposed that. 
Yes, that's, that's mo most unfortunate. That's allowing the bishop to open up. So that was, and as you say, the game continued, takes, um, queen takes. Very good. He didn't, he didn't even bother with knight takes and rook takes pawn check. He just went for the mate and rook takes and <laughs> yes, didn't bother. So, okay, that was that was a flashy finish. Um, then. Um, Well, here's a sort of uh, game that was going very well um, from Alexander Ivanov and Arman Baradaran. Uh, Start from uh, where things began, and got to the position. Bishop, bishop, and rook c8. Um, queen's on side. I think it was this position that. Um, Um, in this position, the bishop uh, took the pawn check, king to uh, king to h8, and then uh, kind of a curious move: how to rescue the bishop? Did h4 to try to open that h file? So um, Armand thought, OK, I'm going to trap that bishop. And Alexander took with the pawn. Took the bishop. Now you're going to win one of the bishop back. And he chose to take the bishop on e7 with a discovered check. So the um, king went back to g8, uh, 